Welcome to Lawn Care Tips and Tricks. My name is Blake Hawthorne, owner of It's His Service. Tonight we're going to be talking about the not so fun side of business. We're going to be jumping into the nitty gritty things on what you should do on the office side and keeping up with your finances, making sure that you're running the company the way that you need to, and taking care of payroll. So guys, let's go ahead and let's jump right into it because I know that this is going to be painful, but a lot of you need it to make sure that you're doing the right things within your company. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how you should identify yourself within your city or within your state as a business. So for a lot of you guys that are just kind of mowing on the evenings or mowing on the weekends, you're probably operating just underneath your name, having your customers either pay you cash or to pay you a check to your personal name. Well, the next step that you need to take within your company to get it established would be to set it up as a DBA. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to the courthouse, and you're gonna set up as whoever you are doing business as whatever you want your lawn business to be. Even if it's say, I'm Blake Hawthorne doing business as Blake Hawthorne's lawn maintenance. You wanna set something up like that within the state to identify and open up a bank account because you have to have the DBA filed at the courthouse in order to open up a bank account within a company name. The next thing that you're gonna look at as you're growing your company is gonna be if you're gonna be a sole proprietorship or an LLC. I think as long as you stay, you know, just a couple employees and yourself and it's like one truck and setup, that a sole proprietorship is fine. But as you start getting multiple crews, multiple employees, getting up where you're paying into workers comp and all these taxes and things within the company, that you want to look at getting an LLC. The reason you want to get an LLC is so that it actually protects you legally if somebody goes to sue your company. If you're filing under a sole proprietorship or a DBA and they come and sue you, they can not only get what your company has at that time, but they can also get anything personal assets that you have as well. This is a nice division between your personal and your business to protect you legally. And then as you grow your company and you decide that, hey, I'm, I'm ready to take the leap, I'm ready to go on payroll, I understand it's gonna hit me on taxes, but I'm gonna have other benefits from doing it, that's when you will look at doing an S-Corp. So once you put yourself on payroll and you're paying those taxes on yourself is when you file as an S-Corp. That's the steps that I'm taking within my company right now because I'm, not, I'm done pouring all of my profits into growing my company, I'm very comfortable with where I'm at and I want to expand on it and I have some benefits for myself and my family by putting myself on payroll and not just taking an owner's draw like I have for the last several years. So that's the three things that I would look at is what genre do you fall into as a business owner? Are you just starting out? Once you get, I would say, above two employees, I would go from the S Corp and start looking into an LLC to protect yourself. And then once you get it built to a point where you're not just taking an owner's draw and you're actually gonna be going on to payroll, which will help you a lot more with your finances, that's when I would start to look at going in as an S Corp. Corp company. Okay guys, the next thing that we're gonna be looking at is a debate between do I pay my employees 1099 or do I put them on payroll? And I feel like this is a gray area that a lot of people try to dance. So for those of you that have been keeping up with us over the past year, you know that part of our $200,000 loss we faced in the 2017-2018 range was part of that was a $21,000 workforce labor audit. And so what this meant is that the workforce labor audited me, they came in, went through all of my payroll, they looked and saw who was being paid as an employee, who was being paid as a subcontractor, and then they figured out if they were being paid as a subcontractor, if they actually fell under the umbrella of what a subcontractor is, or if they were being treated more like an employee. Things that they looked at were, are they using their own tools? Are they clocking in and out? Are they choosing their own schedule? We found out that even though some of the guys were using some of their own tools, they were still coming out to a job site and working an X amount of hours, and they weren't getting paid by the job or by the foot, but they really fell underneath what they consider an employee. And so at that time, they audited all of our payroll and we had to pay a $21,000 fine, which was matching X amount of their payroll each and every year, and then paying that back to the unemployment office. And so guys, make sure that if you have guys that are truly employees showing up, working with you every day, using your tools and equipment, using your trucks and equipment, go ahead and just do the right thing, focus on what you need to as a company, and put them on payroll. It's gonna put you leaps and bounds ahead, especially the one thing that did save me was the fact that we had already switched to payroll. We had already got all of these things in line, so when they came in and audited us, they saw that for the last year or so that we had already been doing the right things, and so they had a little bit of great with us and our company because I didn't learn until I switched accountants about the gray area that we were in that was really black and white. 
And so when the workforce labor came in, they saw it as black and white and everything that didn't reach their standards, we got penalized for. So guys, once you've started your company, you know what you're gonna be, you know, an S Corp, a sole proprietor, an LLC, whatever it is, then you know the type of employees you're gonna have if you're gonna be subcontracting a lot of this work out to other companies and other individuals, or if you're gonna bring guys in house to use them as your own employees, the next thing you're gonna be looking at is your taxes. How can you keep up with your books and your taxes to make sure at the end of the year, if you need to make an investment, you make that investment to keep from paying in a bunch of taxes or that you have the money set aside to pay the taxes that you need to pay. And so guys, what I wanna to talk to you about is what I did for a long time uh, before I got QuickBooks and was tracking everything is I would literally just take my bank statements or I would take all my receipts and I would keep these things organized. And so I created an Excel sheet that had all of my expenses, things like our rent, things like our utility bill, our phone bills, our internet that we were using for our billing in our company, fuel receipts, food receipts, food when I would take clients out, and then food if I would you know, do like a catered breakfast or a meeting with my guys. Next thing was any type of work clothing. And I just kept each of these things categorized out so at the end of the year, I could show a year total on each and every one of these things and then turn it into my accountant. This would save me a lot on taxes and just allow for me to be able to get them done a whole lot quicker. Things that you wanna look at you know, also is if you do any kind of contributions to the church or to charities, those are a write off as well. And then you're able to to take portions of things that you're gonna depreciate. But what I always looked at is I kept a running total of what my income was, what my payroll was, and then what my expenses were. I tried to look at what my 100% write-off expenses were because they only let you write off X amount of food, and that's kind of one of those gray areas. If you're operating within your house, they'll only let you write off X amount of your home or X amount of your utility bill to go towards those things. So you just kind of keep those things set aside to know what percentage you're able to actually take out. I don't know that my accountant did it, but I kept them itemized out for her. And then the last thing that you want to look at is I always take all those numbers, subtract them out and see how much in the positive I am and how much I'm in the negative. So if I'm in the positive, say 40 or $50,000, which would be crazy if I had paid all those things and still had that, especially in the early days of a smaller company, then I knew at that point, instead of paying in taxes, which could be anywhere from 27 to 30 something percent on that, that I would want to then go out and to make a purchase. Those of you that follow me on Instagram, you see where I shared the purchase of my tractor. I mean, I think it was like eight or nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And that tractor was actually a purchase made late December because I saw that I was gonna have to pay in over $8,000 that year, but if I went out and bought this tractor, I was gonna save that. So I was able to take that 8,000 that I would've given the IRS, turn around and put it right into this investment of this tractor, and then I was able to keep and invest that back into my company and not to pay it to the IRS. And so guys, make sure that you keep up with your numbers. If you're keeping up with them year to date, whether you file them yourself, you know, keep a nice, uh, nice folders, just keep them organized, or if you use something like your bank statements or even QuickBooks to keep up with it day to day, I would recommend you sit down with your accountant, you know, when it comes to December to make sure if you need to make any major purchases to save huge on taxes, that you're able to do that before January 1st. So guys, thank you for sticking through this video. I know it was painful. It's talking about a lot of things that aren't that exciting about business. I just hope that you will take these things that you'll apply on, that you'll look at what you're doing, go and sit down with your accountant and just make sure that you are in the clear and that you're not trying Trying to focus on a gray area, operate within that gray area that could come back and bite you in 2020. But guys, I want to wish you a happy new year. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. Thank you for your support this past year. And I'm so excited to share with you in just a few days what we've got going on here for 2020. So guys, happy new years. God bless. And we'll see you next year.